There's a thousand bikers lined up and down the street Wearing a patch and making their presence felt Local chapters, so many independents And one percenters always make the mix Live the right There's a fat boy in sports and so many crazy customs Electric lights are surrounded by so many choppers Beautiful women are walking all around As we make another run right through your town Live the right Better get up for Freedom on UWS Community Radio and the International Community Radio Network.
lived a hardworking girl from Motor Town. So many years through the pouring rain. What little lost she'll never regain. Just by chance, I found her in three feet of winter. Broken top and neglected. Folks, welcome back to United We Strike. This is Sundays, and we've got our program that I co-host with Charlene Holt of Musicians for Freedom. We just said goodbye to Smokey of VoodooStingray.com. Great songs out there, you know. Send Smokey some good, uh, good energy so that his quest for uh, a record deal will go forward and we'll all benefit from hearing more of Smokey's music on air. And now, Charlene Holt of Musicians for Freedom. Who do you have lined up this hour? Hey, Karen. Uh, well, I had the privilege uh, recently here in Denver um, of meeting um, an artiste. And as a matter of fact, uh, I think part of his name has that in it. His, his name is Skip the Artist. He is the man from the near future. <laughs> and Skip is, uh, I, you know, his music, I, I heard him at a house party, and it's a combination of uh, some kind of hip-hop rap along with some uh, uh, sort of a David Bowie or, you know, talking heads kind of feel, you know, a bit uh, sort of a surrealism about it. Um, you know, he's got the uh, the performance kind of feel to it you know he he did a song where i think it was about cancer curing cancer or something and he puts on his white lab jacket and his stethoscope and mm-hmm. you know you know the whole time he's got playing you know tracks behind him and and dancing and and uh skip is from orlando and uh you can uh, find his uh music online at skip the com. 
And so we've got him with us today. He uh, He's in Denver still. He hasn't headed back to Orlando, so we got him on the phone. Are you there, Skip? Yep, I'm here. Well, welcome. Welcome to United We Strike. I um, I met Karen, uh, it was a while back, uh, about a year ago now. How long ago was it, Karen? I guess it might have been about then when we first started talking to each other. And uh, I'm real happy because it gave me a chance to get music back into United We Strike and uh, my heart. And so, uh, really, Charlene, if I haven't thanked you before, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, as a vocalist, I've been out of the music for too long, so this is always fun, and Sundays are my favorite program. Yeah, and and Karen, um, you know, I don't know, where did you come up with the idea for United We Strike? I mean, how is this all your sort of brainchild? I mean, how did this start? Well, I guess you could say it's all my fault. I think that's what Detlef tells me. <laughs> <laughs> So Dat Love is there in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, well, I just realized the more that I learned, uh, the more that I knew that we could not successfully beat this system with violence, but we would have to be educated and we would have to come up with a way to deal with it. So from uh, Tax Holiday 2009, which actually started in December of 2008, to taxfree15.com, to unitedwestrike.com was just a call uh, by me to find out how many people felt like I did that if we simply stop playing their games by their rules, if we have the courage to look at 9-11, which is huge in terms of why we are here today, why military madness is destroying not only um, our country but our world and is unaccountable, if we understand that 9-11 was a lie, then it's time to really to pull back and collectively to join with people all around the world because we the people far outnumber the dominant inbred psychopaths in power and uh, the dip's time to screw us over is coming to an end as we understand that we each have responsibility to stand up and say no more lies, no more war. There's more than enough for all of us. Stop destroying our planet. It's time to co-create uh a way of living that all of us can thrive in because poverty, slavery, wars, lies, manipulation have no place in the 21st century. It's time to grow up and become adults of God and the heroes of our own lives and take our power back. Well said. Beautiful. Well, Skip, um, with that, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your music and your plans and intro some of your songs for us. Awesome. Um well, like you said, I'm from Orlando, Florida. I was born and raised in Miami, mostly. Lived all over different kind of places and uh, picked up different little pieces of a lot of different kinds of cultures. And it's, uh, you know, I also love all different styles of music. So I, I, I am very passionate about just creating, whether it's music or art or uh, or whatever. But um, one of my favorite things that I've done my whole life is, is music and uh spent some time in college and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff, music performance and stuff like that. But uh, really what it is I kind of settled in doing is uh, is a cross between uh, hip-hop, early 70s rock and roll, and, you know, dusty soul music. You know, there's a little bit of ragtime in there at times. There's, uh, there's a little bit of hard rock in there at times. And we um, recently released an album called Until the Very End, which um, all the music that... Uh, I think pretty much all the music you heard me perform the other night was from that album, and uh, the music that we're going to be playing throughout the program today is going to be off that album as well, too. But uh, released on a local Orlando uh, indie label um, that's run by, actually, my producer, my, my good friend, Swan Berger, from a group called The Solo Quest of Sound. And, um, yeah, it's been doing really, really well. I always love opportunities to be able to talk to people kind of outside my own circles and uh, to be able to perform for people who i you know, never performed for before. Uh, touring and being out on the road is one of my uh, my favorite things to do. And, you know, right now I'm actually over in Denver, Colorado, visiting my girlfriend on a vacation, but, you know, I had the opportunity to do that show and, you know, couldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know Holly Riggs. Debt love, I think you've played some of Holly's tunes, Holly Riggs. She's got some songs in our Dropbox. Yeah, sure. Yep. 
Yeah, but but um, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, why don't we have uh, one of your songs now, the the pride, the cure, the cancer? Would you mind? Okay. So no, why don't we why don't we why don't we listen to it and then we uh, we can uh, go on with the show? So stay tuned. Songs comes now. Everybody. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with uh, United We Strike, and I'm Charlene Holt, and you can also find me under the name Vengencia out there on uh, Facebook, and uh, sometimes you'll find me under Charlene Music, and it's S-H-A-R-L-E-N-E-M-U-S-I-C. Um, and we're talking today with uh, a friend of mine. His name is Skip, Skip the Artist. And uh, Skip is originally from Orlando. We just heard one of his tunes, and he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, his tune that we just played and also why he um, is going to register, God forbid, as a Republican so he can vote for Ron Paul. How's it going, Skip? Uh, hi. How are you doing? Good. So what was that song we just heard? 
That was called uh, The Pride to Cure the Cancer. My uh, The album that all the music is off of is actually a concept album. There's a two-part comic book series that goes along with it and a story that's told throughout the course of the album. And uh, one of the things that's bring, being done, uh, or one of the things that's happening in the background of this, this story is, you know, there's the... Uh, Government reaching this this size and, and 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 control over the people, trying to get people to take these manip uh, these behavior manipulators, uh, these these pills, and it's called the cure. And never really says in the album what it's a cure for, but it's supposed to you know bring you into alignment so that everyone's kind of no one's uh, uh, doing anything that they're not supposed to, you know, very, very, you know, it's, a, it's an idea that's been seen in a lot of books and, and stories in 1984. I'm sure you can just go down the line of, uh, of of movies, but I really wanted to take a lot of these ideas that we're already familiar with and to give them more of a personal story. So everything, you know, all of those themes become the background to the story. But uh, but one of the things is, is this, this, this cure that's being pushed on everybody and uh, if you look on the album, the, you know, it's in the artwork, it's that green stuff. Um, and they, they give you an injection, and now you're all balanced, and now you're all, you know, you're like a sheep. You know, you kind of don't don't think outside of the box, and you're just kind of like walking that straight and narrow. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of what the, the, the song is presenting. It's kind of like a futuresque, um, like, here we are. We have all taken this cure, and this is what our lives have become. And, uh, yeah, really fun and really interesting. It's, uh, that's the song that I usually, when I perform, I get to, uh, get all dressed up in my doctor's coat and dance around like a fool. <laughs> Good time. Skip, what woke you up? What woke me up? Uh, oh, I, well, I, I, I can tell you exactly what woke me up. Um, going to college, I was at UCF. And, uh, was doing the music performance thing and, you know, my whole life I was an instrumentalist, uh, played saxophone, played oboe, played, uh, clarinet, played a lot of different instruments, just going band and marching band and all that. So naturally I go into college and I'm doing music performance and, uh, I'm just, I'm all about, you know, I'm in total sheet mode, of course, you know, just, just going to college, getting a, getting a degree so that I can, you know, meet a nice lady and get married and, and get a nice job and a nice car and buy a house with a white picket fence and all that kind of shit. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, am I allowed to curse on air? Well, not the F bomb. Not no, the okay, F bomb. Not that. All right. Well, I'll, I'll just I'll clean it up. <laughs> sorry, I, I naturally I naturally just to be honest I naturally use foul language, but I I can clean it up. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm an honest person, so I always put that out there. So, uh, so I'm, so I'm at college, right? I'm at UCF, and I'm taking, uh, I'm about two and a half years in. I've, I've plowed through the first two years with all of these crazy classes for my major, and, and now I'm starting to take some of my AAA classes, and I take psychology. And this class has got 650 students in it. It's into this great grand hall. And the first day of class, the teacher comes out, and, uh, he kind of gives it gives us the truth, you know, the real stuff. And he's like, you know, most of you have, since the day you were born, had been guided and manipulated by your parents and your families and your cultures and your religions and your societies, and they, they're telling you, you know, what you're going to be one day, what you should be one day. And, uh, you know, so you're here as a result of your parents, you know, put, saving aside their pennies and their nickels and their dimes and telling you that, you know, you need to go to college and you need to get this. And if no one it wasn't really your decision, you know what I'm saying? And that there are all of these things in life that are doing this, they're kind of just, they're making the decisions for you. Um, and before long, you're going to have, you're going to come to a place, whether it's a month from now or a year from now or 20 years from now or 50 years from now, where you're going to figure out like, wow, this is not what I want to do. I This is what I want to do. And, you know, hopefully it'll be before it's already too late to be able to do that, you know, to kind of wake up from this idea. And uh, so he's like, you know, while you're here, be, don't w- just worry about, like, what the grades you're getting and stuff like that. Like, be be passionate about finding what it is that you want to do in your life, you know? Like, what is what is what are your passions? What are your loves? And uh, so from there, like, in the weeks following after that, he played, I had never seen Fight Club before. Played Fight Club in class. Oh, Fight Club! And yeah, that, that's a great move. That was life changing. 
and uh, mm-hmm. different men- movies like, you know, Clockwork Orange, Memento, just movies that make you really think. And I think a lot of people like my age at the time, and especially myself at the time, but a lot of other people in the classroom um, and at the school are really not brought up and not really challenged to think. You know, it's more like just using that, that uh, memorization, you know, like the factoids and, you know, this person sailed at this time, you know, on this date and this year, and you memorize all these little factoids, but you don't really ever have to think about anything, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, kind of like a, a, re- a repetition, you know, you're repeating back what the teacher is telling you. That's what so David Icke calls us, know. repeaters, repeaters. Have you ever heard of David Icke? Yeah. The, the David Icke, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Repeaters. We become repeaters. Oh, that's right. Mm. Now, why don't why don't we listen to one one uh, one more song of Skip uh, Skip the Artist? Would that uh, be all right with you, Skip? Absolutely. That sounds fantastic. How about do uh, Man from the Near Future? If that's okay. Or how about how about we do Red versus Blue? I think that would be really great with the political discussion. Yeah. Well, let's let's have that uh, the next one. Well, why don't we do first the the, the Skip the Artist uh, track two A? No, that uh, the man from the near future. You said, "Yep, man from the near future." Sounds okay. Like that. Then let's go with that one. So stay tuned. We'll be back uh, in a few minutes. Join musicians for freedom on icradionetwork.com every Sunday at 3 p.m. MDT and 10 p.m. UK time for guests and political music live from the Colorado studio. <laughs> Yeah, Karen, why don't you take over? All right, tell me when. Yeah, now. 
<laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. Well, Skip, thank you for the music that uh, that you have let us play. And now I'd like to pick your brain a little bit because I believe that you said that you are going to vote for uh, Ron Paul. Is sure. that true? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now my question is, well, I've got uh, two things. One is a question, and that is, um, what do you think really, or do you think that your vote will count when corporations are classified as persons and they basically own uh, not only our country but the banks and they employ uh, voting machines and lobbyists? So how much really do you think your vote's going to count? I think the uh, the biggest vote. I, I mean, this is actually the, I'm almost 30 years old, and this is the first year that I'm registering to vote. And the reason behind that is because I really believe that the the great the only form really I believe it's a kind of a bold statement. I really believe the only form of voting that actually um, responds to the people is uh, voting with your wallet, not necessarily showing up every four years to punch a ballot. So uh, for me. Uh, Intention has a great, great uh, energy behind what it is that I do with most of the things that I do. It, it, a lot of it is, uh, is just my intention with what it is that I want to create and to see out in the world. And I really believe in what Ron Paul talks about. I um, have great respect for the fact that uh, he's been talking about the same exact things the same exact way and hasn't changed his position on almost everything that he stands for. Since like the early 80s when I was born. And so to see somebody who has that fervor and even at his age to be talking about things like liberty and, and, and individual rights and states' rights and to make it sound so just energetic and beautiful and new and fresh. And I don't know, I, I love the hell out of the guy. I think he's a really amazing person. And, um, you know, do I believe that, you know, with Diebolt voting machines and all these different things that it's actually going to, you know, to kind of, uh, be able to overpower this, uh, this system? Um, no. But at the same time, uh, we, those are things are only as powerful as we give them power. And, uh, to, to see a country or see a world that would, um, that would put down one candidate and put up another one, whether it, uh, it seemed like, you know, um, that's what the end result would be. I mean, there, there comes a point where, where common sense steps in. And yes, you could say um, that with the introduction of the electronic ballot casting system is that those results were obviously manipulated. However, if it was a, wasn't such a close race to begin with, there wouldn't, you wouldn't have been able to get away with that. Whereas when you are able to inspire people and you're able to utilize that inspiration to create a movement like the civil rights movement or um, something that is going to have that same amount of just it's on your TVs. It's 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 right in your face. You know, the thing is, is like during those times, there were people who were absolutely asleep and they had to get woken up. But it it's like the thousand monkey idea. Wait, wait, no, it's not the thousand monkeys. It's the hundredth monkey. Hundred idea. monkey. Yeah. Well, it's just like, you know, if you can, if you can, you know, chug up that hill and just push that rock up that hill, you know, eventually people are going to catch on. And it's all about being able to stay persistent and to stay true to who it is that you are. And, and you know, to bring it back to the beginning, I think Ron Paul is that individual. I wouldn't vote for anybody based upon the fact that, oh, I just need to vote for a lesser evil. I didn't vote for Obama. I didn't vote for Bush, you know, I didn't vote for any, I didn't vote for Kerry, you know, I don't believe in those cats, I don't believe in what they stand for, but Ron Paul's idea of, like, limited presidential powers, that's, that's awesome, how many times have you ever gone into a job application, and you were like, alright, listen, like, I don't want you guys to give me too much power, I don't think that's the way that it works, you know what I'm saying, I think everyone, like, that's what a co-op is, and, you know, I think, uh, I think that's some smart, smart, um, smart ideas, uh, coming from his camp as opposed to a lot of the other people. So that's that's kind of like a nutshell why I dig that dude. Okay. Now I would encourage you to go to taxfree15.com and the video page and watch Psy War. 
where they lay out a very good case for voting being a marketing exercise. And while I agree that Ron Paul seems like a good man, I think that voting is theater. Voting is an exercise. Voting and playing within this system is really training us to be good little children and wait to ritualistically go through their little program so that we can feel like we have a voice when we have none under this current global New World Order administration. And the NWO, uh, when you reverse that, it's O-W-N, which is OWN. We have two. Um, I want you to think about AmericanFreedomBooks.com. That's another website where you can download two free chapters from our buddy Charles Irwin, who is a staunch supporter of United We Strike. And his recent blog... Are, uh, is a, one that features questions that I think are imperative questions for us to begin to understand just the depth of the, um, the criminality because our votes, in, in my opinion, uh, they don't count for squat. All they do is they let the people who are really running the country know that while we're busy going around, spending our time, spending our money, wearing uh, fancy hats, waving banners, knocking on our neighbor's doors, we're not taking care of our homes, we're not taking care of our families, and we're believing that, again, we need to wait until late next year to vote and until uh, the year after that to actually be able to have any power, when instead, these questions that we should not only ask of each of our representatives, and I believe that Ron Paul would fail on these, my personal opinion, you know, I, I don't think that ignoring 9-11 is going to solve a problem when we were lied into the war. And we need to expose those lies so we get out of these illegal occupations. And also, I don't think that any senators ought to be walking around under the threat of 12 super uh, senators who are going to help decide where the protocol goes in this country when they all have ties to the uh, lobbyists, to the corporations, and to the warmongers. But here are a couple questions. Let me share quickly. Are you aware that Congress created the legal government of the District of Columbia with the Act of 1871 and later defined the United States to be a federal corporation per United States Code Title 28, Section 3002, Part 15? Are you aware the states, counties, and cities have been legally transformed into corporations as well, and will you work to restore our lawful union if elected? Will you support the legal United States Federal Corporation or the Founding Fathers Lawful United States of America if elected? Do you belong to, like, the Bilderbergs or any secret societies, uh, a member of an elite special interest group like the Lawyers Guild of Great Britain because you have a bar license? Well, Karen, I have to, let me interrupt. Why do you think Ron Paul would fail? On those well, there are still more, more questions here. Well, for one thing, because he's asking um, always for the, for the Federal Reserve to be audited, and if you listen to uh, Clint Richardson, the CAFA reports audit them. Um, if you go on, I was hearing a host earlier today, I've got to do homework about this, but where the results are, are in already. I think also because, because he's not talking about 9-11, I think that is so crucial as to why our country's here. And also, I think that any of the members of the Congress or the Senate at this time in our history, with any gumption whatsoever, would stand up and quit their job because of the malfeasance and do everything they could to call a strike of government because it's so far out of control. They're not listening to the people. They're spending our money. They're murdering yeah, but, us. but Karen, it's kind of like what uh, Skip just mentioned was, you know, he, 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 it's kind of like, like, he agrees that you vote with your wallet, okay? He understands that as people, you know, our power is, is, is in ourselves and our, in, okay, but, you know, Ron Paul, once again, is sort of a lesser of two evils. No, right, I don't. No, I, got right. to stop there. I don't agree with that at all. Because what it is that he's talking about is actually taking this huge government structure that has got to where it is now, where we're going around the world, we're policing everybody. You know, what I'm saying we're all familiar with these ideas. The Bushism, you know, that started with his daddy and went all the way down to the junior, um, and to take it and to give it back to the states. So all of the the jo- the only job of the federal government is to enforce the decisions of the state. And that's it. And so that at that point, we can become in a, a part and work with a system. Because, I mean, 
Jefferson said that every generation should have its own revolution. So yes, we should probably, with this generation, create a new system. Yet, if we're going to agree that we're going to work within the system, which we do on a daily basis, um, then we've got to be able to work with it. And as the idea of what it was originally constructed as, as a republic, where we're working with the state, and we are working either even off on a local level with our cities, uh, city uh, uh, congress, and uh, and being able to actually influence the way that our day to day life in our own cities and on our own streets happens, which trickles up towards the state level, and then we get to decide things of like, all right, well, do we want homosexual marriage to be legal or le- uh, illegal? Do we want it to be? Uh, prostitution to be legal or illegal? Do we want marijuana or we don't want, to want other controlled substances to be legal or illegal? And then we start dictating our own lives instead of having someone at a federal level or on a worldwide level dictate that. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, I like, totally I'm- agree. I, and I think all, you know, and we all agree. And I guess, Karen, all I'm saying is that Ron Paul is the only alternative. Ron Paul is the alternative to the Democrats and the Republicans. Ron Paul is the controlled opposition right now. Okay, there is nobody else to vote for. No, I, I agree there, and I and I understand. I still just have for myself. Um, they're they're treasonous, and I don't see how any vote can count whatsoever when corporations have personhood, lobbyists are still there, and corporations have unlimited pockets. So I think also that our country and our world does not have the luxury of waiting until late next year. When well, we I would agree. I don't know that we any of us want to wait. And, and, and I understand your point because you're saying that, you know, everybody should just wait and we're going to vote for Ron Paul in 2012. And he's going to come in and fix everything. And no, he's not because he's going to get assassinated just like uh, John F. Kennedy. I mean, it's impossible. It, it cannot be done top down. Okay, but what I I agree with what Skip is saying, and and this is why I'm a Ron Paul supporter, is it is helping to bring all of these questions that you just read, and all of these issues, and what um, Skip just talked about about cities and counties and states, and you know just it brings it all into the discussion. Okay, because if you're you know Mitt Romney and and you know um, Rick Perry, they're globalists. Okay, they they don't even want to talk about any of this stuff. At least with Ron Paul, we can talk about people's rights. Yeah, you know? I mean, we still live in the Matrix, and and why don't we um, uh, have the song of um, Skip uh, Red versus Blue? Uh, <laughs> listen Sounds to that good. one uh, because that fits uh, nicely, doesn't it? And so we'll be uh, back in a sec. So uh, stay with us. This is Musicians for Freedom on UWS Community Radio and the International Community Radio Network. If 
difference between them? Between them, between them. Right. And our believing is the result of our right thinking or our wrong thinking. And if our thinking is not right, our believing is going to be wrong too. What's wrong? So, All right, folks, we are having a discussion here, and you just heard a song that was written by Skip, which is about, you know, uh, red versus blue. And to just bring it back to voting, since I think it's a good conversation, I guess my main concern about waiting to vote anyway is just that we're waiting to vote when time after time after time after time again, when you look at history, we've been sold out regardless of what party it is, and until... We cut through the crap and see it's the bankers in the background who own the governments, who own everything. We've been sold out and turned in collateral on the debt until we come together as people and say no more of this. We'll continue to vote, but our votes don't count. It's who counts the vote. That was a quote from Stalin, and it's very important to understand that. And, Skip, I'm glad to hear you talking about voting with your dollars because there's another group also who are calling for a week-long strike beginning September 12th through the 19th, and it's critical that people not dismiss 9-11 thinking that, you know, well, the government told us the truth or it's, it doesn't have any bearing today, when it has every bearing on why we're at war, why we were led there, all of them lies, and the fact that we should be getting back to our homes, to our independence, to calling well, off these illegal wars. Well, I'll tell you what, like, I personally, I... I have to disagree about the 9-11 thing. I mean, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I believe the same exact things. You know, how do you take a Boeing 757 and fit it into a 16 by 20 foot hole in the side of the Pentagon? It doesn't make any sense. Yet at the same time, something that I learned from Martin Luther King, um, you know, a lot of times when you look back at uh, the two great black leaders at that time, you're going to think of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. They had similar things that they agreed on. They had a lot of things that they disagreed on. Most, most, uh, mostly the, the presentation, the way that they present. And the thing that I love about Martin Luther King was people came to him and they're like, listen, you know, you have to talk about the slavery thing. You have to talk about this. You have to talk, like, you need to be angry. And his position was, it's like, we need to come together and move forward, you know? And I think in this climate right now, when you're able to approach people with not a, not a sense of like, uh, of just, in your face, like you just you can you can you can right. The atmosphere is so bad right now. You can point out very simple aspects of what's going on and be able to have people right there in agreement with you, right in accord with you. And the thing that I like about David Ike is when like the when he presented that uh, the Secrets of the Matrix uh, three disc DVD that he did from that live performance is that. Um, the, each, it goes in layers. It goes in levels. You know, so if you don't want to hear about space alien half lizard men from alternate dimensions controlling <laughs> us from black and white sex style, you can just get some introductory level, you know, this is some mono, ma, a Masonic symbolism that's found in these different places. Of course, the Senate has the fasci on each side of the podium. This is the international symbol. You know, just kind of information like that where you as a layman, you as a person who just, you go to your job, you, 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 you work, you, you pay for your bills for your family, you put your, you know, food on the table, you're just a normal blue-blooded American that doesn't really have some huge strive or achievement for your life other than raising a family and providing. You know what I'm saying? So you can, you can connect with the bread and butter of this country without pushing them off with grandiose ideas of, even though it is a truth, of, you know, the events of 9-11, of, you know, 
the the Rothschilds being in the the, the banks of of every you know country in the, throughout you know since the 1400s. It's like you, you can bring all of this esoteric knowledge, but really, does it push us forward as a people and as a movement to to look aside some of our differences and, as they say in major politics, of across the across the aisle way and really start making improvement happen, making life better. You know what I'm saying? Don't you think, Skip, that life would be better if people actually took the time to realize they'd been lied into this? And all of these last years are lies, and the 9-11 Commission um, was totally, blatantly false. They omitted all kinds of first responder evidence. They omitted tons of evidence. And now the memorial that they're having excludes first responders and family members. You know, don't you think that in order to unite, if we all learn how we've been lied to and manipulated, that we'll have a greater chance of uniting and stepping forward saying, no, we're not going to be pawns in this game anymore? I don't agree, because even look at what Bill Hicks said. The reason why he didn't believe in the system was all because everyone still believed the JFK story. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is a, a, a huge history of, of manipulation and lies that we would have to create correct before we could ever stand on a common ground. As soon as you present 9-11 or, or JFK, or which most people I think actually agree with these days, or half lizard people, you know what I'm saying? You completely lose the attention of those people and actually being able to have a, a building growth relationship. Well, but it's the reason that we're there, and it, it is not in any way parallel to reptilians or anything. It's real history that we've been denied because our misrepresentatives obfuscate. They call us truthers. They try and make that a dirty word where I think that time has come for all of us to be truthers and to just get real and look at the facts, and the facts are we've been lied to, and this is why we're here today. It's why we have the huge debt we have. It's why we're allowing ourselves to be used as the military arm of a new world order. And in my opinion, it's time to stop that, to grow up, to take off the rose-colored glasses, look at what really happened, and come together as people and say, no more lies. We're going to hold you accountable. No more war for banking profit. What do you think is the common ground? Hey, Skip, what is the common ground? Where do you think we find common ground with people? Uh, I think the common ground is, 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 is person to person and situation to situation. You have to be, I mean, if you study marketing and sales at all, you have to be able to know who your customer is. And that goes in all different ways. I mean, you know, Martin Luther King knew his audience. You know, he knew who he was talking to. And he spoke that language very, very well. Look, you look at all the great speakers and all the great writers, they know exactly who their audience is and they write that certain way or they create their audience. You have to be able to look at the situation and be like, listen, all right, in this conversation right now, we're having a great conversation. We're building. We are creating ideas together. And I know that this person is probably not ready for a 9-11 conversation right now. So I'm going to take that, take the opportunity to skip it for another time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's not absolutely necessary because it not, it's not as necessary for us to come together um, it's not necessary to state, it's not necessary to understand or get to the bottom of in order for us to come together because even print, presenting it to most layman people or just first-time conversations is just going to be off-putting and it's going to make you look like a crazy person. Like It's the same way when you're having a religious conversation with someone, a relationship or a sexual conversation with someone. You have to be able to speak on the level that the other person is comfortable with. That's what a conversation is. Mm-hmm. So you're saying it's our humanity, like they're flesh and blood, and so am I. Sure. I mean, because we can yeah. also talk to our blue in the face about, you know, the government involvement with 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 uh, September 11th, but not also into World War II, into the 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 Pearl Harbor. You know what I'm saying? Like we have evidence that that was that was foreseeable three or four days outside of the the, the actual bombing. You know what I'm saying? If you go back into Vietnam, like you go into these things. Our military structure and our political structure and government structure has been corrupt for way too long to actually go through with a fine tooth comb and make sure that we're all on the same page about this. We need, I think we need to move forward. I think we need to come together more as, uh, as a symbolism, a symbol of humanity as opposed to, you know, this fascist government system that we're kind of living in or our oligarchy that we're living in and actually be a shining example of what 
you know, through foreign policy, a through not policing system, through being able to feed and clothe our own homeless and poor instead of kicking them out on the street when their house is foreclosed to be a shining example for the country. And I don't think that's rose covered gla colored glasses, because if we're going to go anywhere in this country, we're going to have to do it as Americans. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to do it as a country because we've created a system of separate countries. We're not going for a unified whole humanity, we're just going to make our country great. You know what I'm saying? We have to do that first. And I think education is the first step of that, not 9-11 education, 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 as in learning how to read and write. Oh, I don't know. I, I agree with you and, and lots of principles, and I'm glad that we can talk and we can disagree without arguing because that's the way that they divide us as well. To me, it is vitally important that we understand why we are at war, why our country is allowing so many millions and trillions of dollars to be spent on war weekly, why we are paying for it, why we are dying. I think a real hard good look at that is critical. So I well, disagree with you on the 9-11, well, but I agree that also we need to become Americans, Americans well, first, and each person in their own country if they become proud of themselves independently and if they become proud of their state sovereignty and their national sovereignty, we can rebuild again from the inside out. I just think a strike's the best way to go. Charlene. Oh, well, <clears throat> don't set up some sort of a false uh, false left-right paradigm here because, because the fact of the matter is when I wake up in the morning, I have to brush my teeth and I wash my face. Okay, so I don't have to sit there and go, am I going to brush my teeth this morning or wash my face? And so sure. the fact is, really, that, you know, both uh, Skip's approach and what he's doing is, is, is correct, if, you know, if I could use that word, and then what Karen is talking about is correct. And so, you know, it's really this whole idea of reality, you know, it's like this um, huge um, elephant, what did you call those uh, things with the, the tusks back in the day, the mammoth, the woolly mammoth? Mm -hmm. I, I I I love the picture. I always have this picture in my mind of this woolly mammoth, which is like the beast, you know, and it's like the New World Order beast. And for all of us to take down the beast, we each have to be uh, chucking our spear, okay? And so so Skip is chucking his humanity spear, you know, and Karen is chucking her, you know, expose the banksters and the globalists spear, and everybody is just, you know, doing their own part, you know, because this has got to be a massive effort of of all the people. You know, and doing it whatever feels right for you, so that yeah. it's all we're yeah. all correct. Absolutely. Well, uh, why, why don't uh, skip? Why don't you uh, shout out your website uh, because we are at the end of the show, um, and we want to play one uh, more tune of yours, uh, "Bloody Hands." I think that fits well as well. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you can reach me online at uh, www.skiptheartist.com, and uh, that's pretty much everything. That's pretty much the tag for everything. So I have Facebook, which is backslash Skip the Artist, Twitter, YouTube, um, yeah, and everything is backslash Skip the Artist. So any social media website that you go to, if you type in backslash Skip the Artist, you're probably going to find me. So. Wonderful. So we have to say goodbye because we are over with the show and we will uh, get out with your great song, Bloody Hands, if you all agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you right. so much, Skip. Thanks. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot. Thank you, Skip. I appreciate yeah. it. Join Musicians for Freedom on icradionetwork.com every Sunday at 3 p.m. MDT and 10 p.m. UK time for guests and political music live from the Colorado studio.
I am back, I am John Titter, member of the inner party, soldier from an unset future, sent back here to collect conclusive info, broadcast on the internet, my occupation and retrospects obsolete, the fat police already got to me, electroshock therapy, cured me of my mindset and set me back five years that it took for me to find it, I think I'll get a medal for what I do here when I'm done, yeah thinking's still a crime, back in the future where I'm from, and I'd rather be a criminal than to not take a stand, and stay to perpetual war, everybody's got blood on their hands and it's gonna take an act to god to wash it off now i forgot when the thou shalt not kill get crossed out and it's irony a sunken old man said to have jesus in your heart but not to have him in your head and then he wept is there no one else to take a stand because in days like these everyone's got blood on their hands and i got bloody hands and don't know what all to do about it i want truth but don't want to be the one to beat it out of i feel safe but a part of me i truly doubt it i just look like and i don't know what it is Without it, bloody hands and don't know what all to do about it. I want truth, but don't wanna be the one to get it out of. I feel safe, but a part of me actually doubt it. I just look like and I don't know what it is to do without it. Some live like a doubt, living it. I can never pretend that I didn't. I didn't mind living it. Mind that they get the eye living. For my benefit, so Cause when I'm from a time is such a go I not expected you to change it I just started to use your I know. live my life without living I'm trying to mind the way Cause life's the only work I'm not trying to forget And I live When the mom the drum take my step And I turn me sick of it to like the sick of it And I live my life without living I'm trying to mind the way Cause life's the only work I'm not trying to forget And I live When the mom the drum take my step My